This news update is brought to you by... Don't you deserve a little me time? Play catch up and binge watch full seasons of your favorite TV shows. Available on video on demand from Flow. Simply press the VOD button on your Flow remote. This is how we do TV. This is how we flow. This is the Bobby Day Today Afternoon Update for Tuesday, January 12. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. A win for the consumer. That's how economist Jeremy Stephen is describing the decision by telecommunications company Digicel to absorb the 4.5% increase in the value-added tax on mobile voice and data services. The VAT went to effect on January 1. The Digicel initiative to absorb the increase, the 4.5% increase in VAT should be seen in the short run as a win for the average consumer but only really in the short run until we are very clear as to Digicel's as to whether Digicel's ability to sustain that increase in their operational cost that is the cost of them carrying business would be possible in fact given current conditions and also degrading the though the economy has been turning around of sorts it's still rather uncertain i'm a bit or rather it would be a bit remiss of me to state whether this move has any possible positive ramifications in the long run i suspect not and it all depends on the ability of flow as a competitor to see what they can bring to the table. However, Mr. Stephen, a lecturer at the University of the West Indies, says while he believes the company can hold its own in financing this increase, he is unsure for how long. Digicel has had the, uh, the recent ability via the windfall, the expected windfall from the contract, the government contract that they just got, and the increase in the cost of the provision of data to the clients, to data packages, to the clients, though they have also increased the gigabytes in offer, the actual cost has gone up as well, uh, overall cost. So Digicel might expect an increase and be rather confident in this increase in revenue uh, for this new calendar year. So for this year, one could expect, or at least I anticipate, that they should sustain that 4.5% or absorb that 4.5% increase um, in the value of VAT, in the percentage of VAT, for some time, uh, at least for this year. But to see it going into next year and beyond would be a bit difficult as it stands. Officials of the Ministry of Education and the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union are scheduled to meet again early next month to discuss a number of vexing issues. Among them, payment for correcting school-based assessment projects set by the Caribbean Examination Council. Following a meeting on this and other areas with representatives from the Ministries of Education and Finance, BSTU President Mary Redmond told Barbados today that a lot of areas had been covered during the two-hour-long meeting. I think that the practical aspects of the implementation of CXE's programs, many of those aspects they were unaware of as to how they actually operate within the school environment. In relation to SBAs, they were able to see and understand the volume of work involved, the hours of work, and the, the time constraints under which teachers are working in relation to the preparation and correction of the SBAs. However, she said while she did not expect a resolution from yesterday's meeting, a follow-up has been set for the first week of February. We are happy that a meeting, a second meeting has been scheduled and it has only been scheduled so far away because the PS will be on duty leave later in January. So we are looking for the latest, my understanding is, the first week of February. Any other areas we'll discuss besides the SBA? We discussed um, problems associated with the implementation of the CCSLC program and the CVQs and we have been promised to meetings to deal specifically with those problems that we have identified. But the, the majority of this meeting focused on SBAs. How would the appointments? You have some no, 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 no. We, have, we didn't deal with appointments in that meeting. 
Cabinet has approved amendments to the Domestic Violence Act. A word of this from Transport Minister Michael Lashley. Addressing a St. Michael East Branch meeting over the weekend, Lashley lamented that there are several pressing issues apart from the economy that needs to be addressed, including domestic violence. These are some serious social issues that we have to tackle. And the Democratic Labour Party, I can say very factually, that only on Thursday at Cabinet we approve the amendments to the Domestic Violence Act. Because the Domestic Violence Act, as it stands, if a man visits a so-called friend during the day or night and he perpetrates some act of violence on that person, then he cannot make an application on the Domestic Violence Act because the Domestic Violence Act, as it stands, recognizes spouse, former spouse, or member of the household. So visiting a relationship is not captured. I mean, amended the act to capture instances like that. So I, I just draw that example to say that as a government, yes, we have to fix the economy. And we're doing that too. But there's social issues too that we have to fix. In sports, FIFA's president, Sepp Blatter, and UEFA boss, Michel Platini, may face longer bans from football despite being handed eight-year suspensions last month. FIFA's ethics committee wanted lifetime bans and has indicated that it will appeal against the sentences in a bid to increase them. The two were found guilty of breaches surrounding what was described as a disloyal payment made to Platini in 2011. Both have denied any wrongdoing and have also appealed against their bans. There's regional and international news after this short break. Naniki Music Festival presents five amazing shows from January 13th to 17th, 2016. On January 13th, at Holders, we salute Urban Burgi with Island in the Sun by Stefan Walcott's 1688 Big Band. On the 14th, our free sunset concert at Frank Cullum Hall with the Rudy Smith Quartet. Reggae legend band Aswat takes over Holders on January 15th. On January 16th, the Nicholas Branco Orchestra and Grammy Award winner Roberta Flack return to Holders. Finally, at Naniki on Sunday, January 17th, Caribbean Fusion in the Hills with Edwin Yearwood, Leston Paul, Ross Ali, and Serenader. Others include Nikita, Mylon Clark, Rhea Driggs, Vanessa Lee, and many more. General admission tickets from $70 and $250 for VIP. In the region, Jamaica's top cop sends a strong message to his officers on the issue of sexual harassment. Police Commissioner Dr. Carl Williams says he has received several complaints of sexual harassment within the Jamaica Constabulary Force and warns that any found guilty of such charges could face criminal charges or dismissal. Dr. Williams said some cops had complained of sexual harassment by senior officers in the form of unwanted physical contact, such as actual touching, fondling, pinching, cornering, or trapping by leaning over a worker. Venezuela's Supreme Court has ruled all actions of the opposition held National Assembly are void until three band members are removed from office. The decision comes after the Assembly swore in three opposition members who were suspended by the court. Four lawmakers were barred by the Supreme Court, three from the opposition and one allied with the government. After the Socialist Party alleged irregularities during last month's vote for a new Congress. On the international scene, Turkish officials are reporting that at least 10 people have been killed in an explosion in a tourist area of Istanbul. According to officials, a Syrian national carried out a suicide bomb attack near the city's famous Blue Mosque. 15 people were also wounded. More in this BBC report. Police have cordoned off the area. And this is the heart of Istanbul's touristic area, the heart of the old city in Sultanahmet Square, beside the Blue Mosque, beside Topkapi Palace, beside all those uh, very uh, touristic areas that 12 million travellers a year, tourists a year, come to see. 
Um, now, the question is, who could have carried out this attack? Nobody yet has claimed responsibility. And that's news and sports, but there is more on our website at www.barbidestudy.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Isomi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Prinella Wedderburn. Good afternoon.